people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. With an end-to-end -end indigenous digital software solution, the India stack has not only garnered heaps of praise from all corners of the world, but has also compelled other nations to reach out to India in order to borrow the technology and emulate the model of application. Unique identification, Aadhaar and the Unified Payments Interface or UPI have particularly captured the world's attention. An increasing number of countries are looking to forge digital alliances with India in order to provide a similar tech-driven, easy, safe and sustainable way of handling everyday services and operations that India has provided to her citizens. Join us as we take a closer look at how India has established herself as the global digital leader who is being looked up to for support and solutions from around the world. The Modular Open Source Identity Platform, or MOSEP, an open source foundational identity platform developed by the International Institute of Information Technology, Bengaluru, has partnered with the National Civil Registration Authority of the Western African country of Sierra Leone to develop a digital ID pilot project on the lines of India's Adar. As many as six nations, including Sri Lanka, Morocco, the Philippines, Guinea, Ethiopia, and the Togolese Republic are already using the platform. Apart from these countries, Tunisia, Samoa, Uganda, and Nigeria have also expressed their willingness to adopt the Indian model. India's successful digital journey, from creating Adar, a unique digital identity that is accepted all across the country, to creating a wider set of open APIs called India Stack has ushered in a digital revolution around the globe. 80 million people in the world are now got their identity using MoSIP. And we are working with, uh, as of today, 11 countries. Five of them are uh, rolling out nationwide program and six are evaluating it in large pilot programs. And eventually, if all these 11 uh, adopt and everybody in those countries get MoSIP, based identity, it will be close to 400 million people. So it's a very, very large project. India Stack is a collection of open APIs and public goods that aim to make identity, data, and payments easy and viable for all. The primary components of the India Stack are a presenceless layer, a paperless layer, a faceless layer, and a consent layer. A successful example of India Stack is that Indians completed over 8 billion UPI transactions to the tune of over 237 billion USD in January alone this year. India Stack actually consists of many applications. You have Aadhaar, you have UPI, DigiLocker, Covin, number of them. Uh, it has been extremely successful in India. When the entire world was severely impacted by the economic headwinds caused by the COVID pandemic and exacerbated by disrupted supply chains, it was the India Stack technology that assisted India in preventing a critical situation from spiraling out of control and saving its poorest citizens by sending them both money and material without delay. Even the most developed of countries struggled to deliver essential food and medical supplies to their citizens during those days. Witnessing India's success, many countries have not only applauded India staff, but have also expressed interest in acquiring the system themselves. It works! <laughs> Very nice! Very nice! 
there is a lot that we can learn one from another. Uh, uh, we are very impressed by what has been achieved in India with, uh, with the India stack and, uh, and uh, UPI. Digital Locker, another division of India Stack, provides Indians with a paperless platform to protect their documents in a government supervised locker. While India Stack was fundamentally created to benefit the citizens of India, the country, which runs on the core ideals of Vasudev Kutumbakam, the world is one family, never hesitated to share the technology with her global brethren. India Stack is no longer exclusively available in India. As it describes itself, India Stack is a collection of open APIs and a vision for the world. India has been generously assisting others in developing a similar platform for the social and financial inclusion of their citizens. Observers around the world believe that India will be the next digital leader. India has leveraged her ever-widening pool of tech-savvy talent to accomplish her ambitions. The world is counting on India to assist in achieving global digital goals, as well as paving the way for brand India to flourish further. Moving on, the government of Sri Lanka is hopeful of emerging from the crisis it has been stuck in for months. President Ranil Vikramasinghe exuded confidence in his plans to restore pre-crisis level of forex reserves and bring the country back to the economic normal in a few years from now. President defended his government's calls in the backdrop of widespread protests held in Colombo to demand tax cuts, including the income tax. Sri Lankan government is also in talks with its primary lenders, China, India and Japan, in order to ensure the International Monetary Fund program. Streets of Colombo have been rocked by massive demonstrations as people cutting across the social hierarchy have taken to streets demanding rollback or at least reduction in range of taxes that have been imposed by the government in line with a host of measures adopted to bring the country back to economic normal. Workers from at least 40 trade unions expressed their anger and said they were bearing the brunt of the negative dividends of government's incompetence. Sri Lanka has been seeking a 2.9 billion USD loan from IMF, the global lender, in order to stabilize its economy. It has been in talks with its primary lenders China, India and Japan in order to get its debt restructuring done. It is also required to boost the country's revenue by 11.3% of GDP this year, 3% more from what it targeted to achieve in the previous fiscal year. In a bid to achieve the same, the government had come up with a financial plan earlier which comprised imposition of taxes on nearly all sections of professionals in the country with tax slab ranging from 12.5% to 36%. Ada me mahata wana vita del sansthawa varaya viduliya telecom jala sampadana atulu merate atyavashya seva siyallama ada me kotuwata aave Ranil Vikramasinghe ge Ranil Vikramasinghe ge me asadharana badu pratipattiyata weda karana janathawa ge virodhaya pala karannata the government said it was hopeful of achieving economic growth in years to come with Colombo emerging entirely out of crisis by 2026. As per government's data, Sri Lanka's reserves reached 2.1 billion USD at the end of January, which is the highest it has been in about a year. Economic experts say the country's current situation is the result of successive, imprudent and popular policies. They also say the COVID pandemic further exacerbated the crisis 2020 onwards. Previous President Gotabaya Rajapaksa had to flee the country after months-long popular uprising literally reached the presidential palace last year. Ranil Vikramasinghe was then installed as the president, whose government, he says, is confident of making gains with a new set of financial policies. Bindu at Wage, Vati Tubuna Videsha, Sanchite, Americano dollar, million a pansi at Dakwa, Hiranagwagani Mata, Apata dam Puluang Velatieno, Sancharaka Viapare, Ali Panagan want up to Puluanguna, Parval Pura City, Deshapal Nik Udgoshene, Kerming Sidukeru Bada Madi Unat, Sancharakin Lanka Tava, 
लोके होंदम संचारक तमनांत दहायक अतरे लंकाव नाम के रुना मैं जनवरी माह से लंकाव टा संचारक के अन संख्या पैमिनी संख्या व लक्ष्य कट अधिकाय यह वार्ता का तो प्रमाण है मैं आकारें सेलु शेष्ट्राइंगिम अभी प्रगतियाँ लब्बमिन सिटी नो while the government hopes that its measures can restore financial stability in the country, there are a number of commentators who opine the opposite. Some say the change in regime has only worsened the situation with people now forced to pay more than ever for the least they are receiving. The government has time and again appealed to people to cooperate with the government's policies, which doesn't seem to be happening at least as of now with some saying that they will hold countrywide protests if the government doesn't change its economic stance immediately. Moving on. Indian export basket is constantly expanding with figures cruising towards $1 trillion. 2021 had recorded a significant uptick with exports registering 36% growth in one year. Each component in the basket has shown terrific record of late. Today, we focus on India's leather industry, whose rise is not just catering to the growing Indian needs, but is also making its way to the global market. Leather Luxury is a modest leather footwear enterprise in Agra, in northern India's Uttar Pradesh state, which produces around 200,000 pairs of shoes annually. Leather Luxury, despite being a relatively smaller enterprise, exports thousands of its shoes to Dubai. Agra is home to a number of such small-scale units that contribute significantly to the nation's overall production and add greatly to India's leather footwear exports. As international footwear brands look to source their production needs, and with many also looking to diversify outside of China, the world's current largest producer and exporter of leather. Experts believe that Agra would fit the bill. For example, in the immediate aftermath of the COVID outbreak, German shoemaker Von Wellix announced that it would shift its manufacturing operations out of China to Agra. The local shoemakers, however, believe that the country's domestic industry is already vibrant and a government push in line with the mission at Manir Bar Barat, will further multiply their manufacturing capacity. I expect that Indian shoe industry will become very high in the coming times, maybe five to ten folds better than what is today. If we get some more grants and aids from the government and more incentives, I think the shoe industry will grow more times than what we are expecting today. According to the Council for Leather Exports, the Indian leather industry's key development driver is the country's footwear market. In addition to footwear, India also produces a wide range of leather goods, including wallets, belts, and other accessories. Manufacturing units of leather products are spread all over India, with small-scale units popping up on a regular basis. While the majority of total production is used to meet the country's domestic needs, India has historically been a major leather exporter. With a shift in trade and political dynamics, exports have experienced a sudden boom. Even the pandemic had little impact on the leather industry. During the first pandemic wave in 2020 to 2021, India exported 1.49 billion USD worth of footwear alone. The figures jumped significantly to 2.05 billion USD in the financial year 2021 to 2022. Europe and America have been the traditional consumers of Indian footwear. However, with growing demand of India's high quality leather products, India has found new markets in other parts of the world as well. अभी जो आगे फ्यूचर का जो टारगेट है हमारे पास एक्सपोर्ट का वो करीब करीब 1000 करोड़ का है समझे जो पांच गुना ज्यादा है मतलब जो हमारे जो एग्जिस्टिंग एक्सपोर्ट है उसका पांच गुना है तो इस पे हम लोग काम कर रहे हैं 
और होपफुली इसको हम लोग अचीव कर लेंगे जिसके लिए सरकार से कुछ डिमांड की है टैक्सेशन में इम्पोर्ट ड्यूटी फ्री और इस, ये है तो इसमें काफ़ी कुछ अचीवमेंट कर चुके हैं हम लोग India's leather industry is aiming to touch the 10 billion USD export mark within the next 3 years. Experts and manufacturers say the Indian footwear industry is growing in both scope and size because it has become increasingly competent. The infusion of technology has catapulted the industry onto the global scene, where it is directly competing with major global brands. Experts say the government's production link incentive scheme PLI in the leather industry, especially in the footwear sector, has the potential to bring great dividends. They further predict that India will be able to surpass China in exports. For now, Indian leather products are catching up with the best of the global brands and are not only shining domestically but globally as well. Time now for Asia this week. The stories from across the continent. Developing realistic sounds inside the car can be relaxing as well as fun. The Japanese company Yamaha Motors is developing a noise regulation system called Alive AD or Alive Acoustic Design. This Alive AD works to gather information about the number of engine revolutions, degree of the accelerator, speed and so on. Based on this information, comforting sounds are developed for cars and provided to the driver. Yamaha Corporation is a sister business of Yamaha Motor. This collaboration made it possible to create a live AD. Kinen, shagai sound kisei ga kibishiku natte kimashite, shitsunai no sound to yu tokoro ga ushinaware tsutsu arimasu. Ma sona naka de Yamaha ni motomerare sound wa to yu tokoro de koyu device o mochite shashitsunai dake demo sound o enshitsu suru. というところで開発をスタートさせていますヤマハ発動機としましてはエンジンハードで培った技術というところがありますのでそれを活かして音源作りの方を実施していますまたヤマハ株式会社の方では音響技術というところがありますのでその音響技術と弊社のエンジンハードの技術というところを融合しましてこのデバイスを開発しています This EV car runs quietly The sound device allows the driver to feel a sense of exaltation. Companies all over the world are developing systems to control noises outside of cars. Under these conditions, Yamaha's invention is expected to spread globally. A traditional festival named Naputa is organized in the Aomori prefecture of Tohoku region in Japan. Beautiful traditional crafts are the highlight of this festival. Naputa festival takes place at Tokyo Dome in Tokyo. This place is usually used for baseball games. The Furusato Festival Tokyo 2023 aims to revitalize the tourism industry which has been sluggish due to COVID-19. by introducing local traditional festivals and local delicacies visitors can see many attractions at a single venue potato butter is a popular food in hokkaido people enjoy eating it with salted squid hokkaido no kita akari toyu e okute amakute hoko hoko no imo ni junsui na butter wo noketa jaga butter ga osume desu shio kara えー、明太子、えー、チーズ、鮭、えー、ウニといったようなトッピングがあります。コロナもだんだん収束してくると思いますんで、あのどんどんこういうイベントが増えてくることを望んでいます。Japanese eel fish is another popular delicacy among foreign tourists. Ishiki Town in Aichi Prefecture is known as an eel farm in Japan. The fish for sashimi on top of rice is caught at fishing grounds in the Sea of Japan area. Japan has rich traditions and culture that attract tourists from around the world.
Indian magnate Gautam Adani said this week he would keep investing in Israel after his group took over one of country's main ports. The entrance of Adani has spurred Israel's leaders to revive hopes of creating a trade gateway connecting the Mediterranean port of Haifa and the broader Middle East, including Saudi Arabia, which does not have ties with Israel. The Indian billionaire did not speak about his group's recent share sell or scathing short sellers report that has pummeled his stocks. Adani joins China Shanghai International Port Group, which opened in 2021 new pairs across the bay in Haifa. The entry of major operators from Asia promises to boost Israel's standing as a regional trade hub. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said at the ceremony he was working to leverage the investments in Haifa to establish a trade route connecting the Mediterranean and the Gulf, bypassing the Suez Canal. The idea has been tossed around for years, but Israel hopes it became more realistic after normalizing ties with a number of Arab countries in the US-sponsored Abraham Accords. Moving on, Thai Pusam Festival is a vivid illustration of devotional extravaganza. People from across the state gathered and paid obeisance to Hindu Lord Shiva and Lord Karthikeya to mark the festival that has now transcended the country's boundaries and is celebrated in the other parts of the world too. Holy town of Rameshwaram in northern India's state of Tamil Nadu witnessed hundreds of devotees congregating to mark Thai Pusam festival recently. The festival comprises a range of activities and events that involve celebration and offerings of prayers to Lord Shiva, the Lord of Destruction in Hinduism. Colourful lights and rhythmic music rejuvenated the atmosphere as devotees from across the country gathered to pay their obeisance to the Hindu deity. This year, a special event was organised in the temple ponds where Swami Ambal rode in a beautifully decorated raft and blessed the devotees. Daipusam Thiruvula Indraki, Tamilakum Muludum, Vegis Serapaka and other Buddhist world. Adilu Kuripare, Raman, East World Kupuja Shiva, in the Rame Saratale, Lakshma Dita Tilapur, Megapuria, Visheshaman Undre, in the Korana Kala Tilapur, the Mindri. According to beliefs, Thai Pusam festival is celebrated to commemorate the birth of Lord Karthike, the son of Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati. The festival is popular for its ceremonial act of devotional sacrifice through dance, food offerings and physical self-mortification. Devotees visit to the beach Agni Tirtham, located to the east of Lord Shiva's temple, and take a bath in the holy water to atone for their sins. Hindu Tamils have been following this tradition for a long time. The festival is becoming increasingly popular by the day. While its celebration was earlier confined to the state of Tamil Nadu, the festivities associated with the festival have transcended the national boundaries and it is now celebrated with similar fervour and enthusiasm in other countries too. Rameshwaram-like scenes were witnessed in Malaysia and Singapore too, where Hindu devotees performed rituals with great fervour. Jadi ini tahun saya okay, bersyukur lah dapat uh, ambil kawdi dan uh, apa uh, 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 dapat uh, selesaikan nazar saya lah. With an aim to decimate the inner evil and to seek the deity's blessings, Kewari Atam, an old Tamil tradition, is performed by the devotees. A number of devotees pierce their tongue to express their devotion for the God. Devotees say the festival brings peace and harmony in the lives of people. There are many Hindu festivals that are primarily aimed at seeking peace and are essentially aimed at celebrating good over evil. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. 
See you next week. Goodbye and take care. People have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.